Oh. Wow. Sports. And we are here, folks. We are finally here. God, I love sports. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 2021 and 2022 NFL season and my prediction picks. I'm your host, the Blind Canadian Cat. Goes by the name Cody. Call me Cody. Call me Cat. Call me Cody Cat. Call me Cat Noby. Call me pretty much whatever name you want to call me under the book. I'm kind of giving up on nicknames. And even though I keep telling myself I want to call myself by an alias rather than my actual name, you can go look at all the skit videos I made, put my freaking name out there another, another, another time, that it doesn't matter. And for anyone wondering, yes, this is technically alcohol, but it's those bullshit mics of 5%. I'm down the three bottles, and they've done nothing for me. And the only reason I'm this way is because it's late at night, as per usual. I'm tired. And I'm probably rushing all of these things because, you know, welcome to the life of video making, editing, and chaotic chaos. But before we begin, I want to I wanna take a moment to recap things that have happened these last couple of months. And for those who are more interested in the football picks, I'm not asking you to actually listen. I'll put a thing here where you can just skip ahead to that. For those who actually just want to talk football. But because this is my channel, these are my rules, I want to recap things. And should I make a vlog for it? Probably, but I just want to get things out here. So when we last talked, um, a couple months ago, I shared a vlog trying to update y'all on the possibility of life going on and uh, with potential moves and potential uh, life changes, life futures, yada yada. Well, the two moves did happen, but they were not the moves I were expecting. I was expecting where it was. Grammar is hard. And with that, it, uh, it put a lot on me. Uh, I, I'll just be upfront and honest with all of you. These last couple of months have left a mental scarring on me. I've, I can't, I can't diagnose myself, but if I could, that was probably the closest or the worst depression state I've ever been in. And it, it varies for reasons. June was just a mentally uh, exhausting time frame. July was events that went down that I hope to never experience again. And then August was just kind of a self-revelation, try to refigure out my identity and who I am, who I, who I want to be, and how I want to go moving forward. So uh, I'll just, like I said, I'll mean up front. I did not have a good summer. My summer was plagued with uh, many of the negative thoughts and emotions going through in a, just a rough time in general. But with the bad, some could argue there is good. Um, I went through some unstable times, but now I'm, I'm not gonna say I'm perfect, but I'm back, I'm stable. I, I have, I can worry about myself, I don't have to start worrying about others and trying to direct others into a certain direction or life or whatever. I can focus back on me. It is all me, and we're just gonna we're gonna keep it that way for a period of time. And speaking of keeping it me, um, I have let close friends know, and I've let certain people of certain people in family, and I've I'm opened up more. I've done some uh, opening with myself, some some self. Uh, I, I can't think of the right words, but I've learned things about myself. I've opened up. I'm more open, honest in who I am and how I want to proceed through life. For example, I have come to the conclusion, I don't know if I can say it that way, but I am bisexual. What does that mean? Not much, really. I, I'm not asking for you to look at me any different. I'm not asking you to appraise me or congratulate me or anything it's nor do I really feel the need to make this comment make this video or say this to you all especially because this is going to be mostly football people who probably don't want to deal with this but this is just my way of showing comfortability with viewers here like I said I've been doing YouTube since 2013 
So, it really is my channel, my footprint, whatever I want to do with it. And I'm enjoying what I do. And I figure, if I'm going to be open and honest, I'm going to be open and honest with you guys as well. Like I said, I don't really hope to gain much out of this. I don't really hope to gain uh, any higher elevation on how people perceive me. I'm just, I'm looking to be open, I'm looking to be honest, and I'm looking to just, uh, I guess, add representation. Because in a world where a lot of hate has flown, a lot of hate has made itself known, I feel like there's also time for love to be shown. And acceptance of one another is the best way to show love. So I want to take this opportunity to let you know who I am. And I want you all just to continue seeing me as your friendly neighborhood cat who makes football videos, does songs, and games every once in a while. Maybe skits, but that requires people in my IRL life to actually help out, but you know. That's a, that's a different subject for another day. Anywho, that is all I want to say. Now let's actually talk about football. But we are here, folks. We are here. The season is here, and let us get us started. Um, as usual, for what I'm going to do for these videos, I will give you my straight up and against the spread picks. I will arbitrarily pick the spreads through... Uh, blah, blah. I believe the website's called Odd Sharks. I have my mouse moved, so I can't really look at it right now. But Odd Sharks, I've been doing it for years now. That's where I get my spreads. And I'll place them down on one day, and I just keep it there. I don't tend to change it. So whatever spread I show you will probably be a different spread than the actual game day, or when you see this video, or when you bet. Because I'm kind of nonchalant. I'll record these videos one day. Sometimes I'll release them that day. Sometimes it may be a couple of days later. Uh, totals... Um, we've done a couple of years, but I've decided to just move that to Twitter. So speaking of which, make sure you follow my Twitter, Canadian Cat CP. I had a burp coming up. Excuse me. Follow that. You'll see my totals. You'll see me bullshit about certain games. You'll hear me usually just whatever in general. Football mostly, but I, I try to keep up life talks and yada yada. And just for record's sake, I will show you. These are all my previous results from straight up against the spread and totals. Just to show you roughly where we're at, and like I've always said in the past, my straight up goals are to get under 100 incorrects, and then spreads and totals, cross my fingers, we get above 50%, call it a day. But now things are going to be interesting, because the NFL has expanded to a 17 game regular season, which I will go on record in saying, um, I disagreed, I did not like the idea, I would have totally rather have stayed with the 16, that is just me. I've learned to accept that, move on. Makes fantasy a little interesting, but also the regular season stats. Now, some players are going to look better than others, career-wise, record-wise, etc., etc. And, of course, we'll always be keeping up with fantasy. This year, we are partaking in four leagues. We have, of course, year six of the League of Assholes. All eight player teams are returning from last season. We have, of course, the NFL YouTube Prognosticators League, my third year into it. Uh, the draft just took place this this night. Um, I'm about an hour off coming off of that. And then we have two more leagues. We have the Sleeper League, ran by none other than Chris himself from Hatbox. Um, a couple of the players like Justin are also in that league, and a couple of his family, friends, and whatnot. So we'll be keeping up with that league. And then, of course, because I've been in Discord now for almost a year, we have a Discord League. And, uh... Before I say anything about that, I want to give a shout-out to my good friend, Rachel. Rachel's probably not going to win any games, but she did make Draft Night very entertaining. And that is all I will say according to that. And then, of course, with four Fantasy League, we also have three pick'em pools ran by fellow members of the Progs. One by Justin, one by Chris, and one by good old Half Moon. I really don't talk to him much, but he's been a long-time prognosticator, part of the Progs League. Good guy. I like him. I've watched like one or two of the videos. I get back. I'm not perfect. But he's doing a thing, which I recommend you join. He's giving out free money. It doesn't cost to sign up. And all, and if you win, you win money. Sign up for it. It is against the spread points and confidence points. I just learned today that it was against the spread. I didn't realize that. So I had to readjust my picks. 
but it's against the spread. And so I recommend you join that. Free money on the line. And then of course Chris is doing a survival pool. So we have a whole bunch of shit we gotta keep track of. No guarantees that I do actually keep track of that, but we're gonna try anyway. And unlike some people, we're gonna try to keep these videos under 20 minutes. This video probably won't, but the rest of them, we're gonna try. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let us get into my week one picks. And you know the drill. I kick back, relax, I let my thing scroll up, and I'll just give out a few quick notes and points just to see how we're feeling. Please feel free to talk to me in the comment section below. Feel free to shout me out on Twitter. We can discuss sports and why I'm wrong. And another thing I like to do, uh, uh, Justin has this thing called the rule of four where he says four betting underdogs win their games outright. I try to follow it, but I almost never do. I almost never do. So, if you're wondering why some of my picks aren't always the best, that is why. But let's take a look. Tampa, they're gonna steamroll Dallas. I, I, I can buy into Dallas's offense maybe giving out production, but Tampa's gonna win this game. Dallas, I, I just don't see them keeping up. Tampa, realistically with this game, Tampa could probably get away with winning like a 24 to 17 game, they something like that, but I just have a feeling Tampa's gonna put up some points because Dallas doesn't have a defense, or not nearly as good as other defenses. And Dallas, while well, they might try to score, Dak coming off an injury, he's probably not gonna be 100%. He'll put up points, but he's probably not gonna be 100%. So I think Tampa will win this game. Pro expect something from like last year's opener where Casey won, what was it, 34 to 20? Expect something like that. That's what I believe. Uh, Jacksonville takes care of Houston, even though I like Tyrod. I always like rooting for him, but Jacksonville will take care of him. I like the Chargers. I like Titans. I Arizona, I don't know what to get out of them at this point, especially last year. You think they're this great team. I, I had high hopes for Arizona to outright win the division. I did. But then they just kind of crashed to earth, lost some games that they probably should have won. So I don't know what to think of them. Tennessee, they have no defense. But they got a good enough offense that I think they can outmatch Arizona. I do, I do. Chargers, I, I can see the hype in Washington, but I'm not fully convinced on it. Oh, uh, here, I'll do it after the pick, but I got another thing I want to talk about. Uh, Minnesota will take care of Cincinnati, although with Cincinnati, I would not be surprised if they won this game. I'm not sold on Minnesota like some teams are, but I'll, I'll take them to win. Carolina and New York, I think that'll be a fun, I think this will be a fun game. I really do. I see a lot of talks about potentially being a blowout, but that relies on me relying on Sam Darnold, and I'm trying to think maybe outside of that Monday night game in his first career start against Detroit. I have not seen Sam Donald really blow anyone out. I haven't. You can bring up a game that I probably forgot. That's the only game that comes to mind. And I like to think about that game too because of Chris's comments about it. <laughs> uh, about taking deterrent survival pools. Ah, good times. Good times. Make sure you join the NFL YouTube prognosticator page. I'll put a link down in the description below. Uh, I got my thing right. Um, Atlanta, Philly, that's a coin flip, honestly. Who knows? Who cares? But I'll take Atlanta. Buffalo, I mean, they beat Pittsburgh by 11, and I don't think Pittsburgh's any better than they were last year. Buffalo, I want to believe they're better, but at the same time, they feel like this year's Tennessee, where last year Tennessee went all the way, had some improbable wins, yada yada. But they kind of, it would not shock me if Buffalo lost in the first round of the playoffs. Uh, but when this is all said and done, it would not shock me. Uh, San Fran to win, Seattle to win. Um, I get that Detroit's gonna suck, probably. It'll probably suck a lot, a lot. But, fuck you, San Francisco. I'm not giving you seven and a half. Not in week one. Fuck you. I was hesitant on KC minus six, but then I remember the only reason that game with Cleveland kept it close was because Mahomes was out for the second half, so they had no offensive production. So, no. I, always, I keep seeing the hype for Cleveland. I want to believe in the hype for Cleveland, but I want them to earn it. I want them to prove it to me. Prove it to me you can beat Casey with Mahomes all four quarters. Prove it to me. I like the Giants. I have no faith in Denver. 
And the, the Giants, I want to believe, will be a sneaky team that can win their division. But that relies on Daniel Jones. I don't have that faith in him yet. But I want to believe, partially because of the NFC East, uh, no repeaters, yada yada. But, and I, I just don't trust Alice's defense. And I don't know what I'm going to get from Dak coming back from injury. The Giants, realistically, should be a good team. The Giants, realistically, should win eight, nine, ten games. They should. They should. They probably won't, but they should. And either way, Daniel Jones should probably be gone after this season. Period. Green Bay below New Orleans. I kind of wanted to see Taysom start, but I can get why we're going with Jameis. Um... Is Mac Jones better than Cam Newton at this point in life? Maybe. But I'm going to roll with Miami in this game. I like Miami. I think New England... New England could possibly be a playoff team, but so could Miami. I have faith in Tua. I'm going to roll with that either way. But plus two and a half. There's a part of me that's thinking this is going to be one of those games where the other team loses because they couldn't convert a two-point conversion to tie the game. That's just kind of where I'm seeing it. I think it's a low-scoring affair. Rams blow up the Bears. I don't care who the hell starts. I keep hearing Andy Dalton, but Justin Fields is going to start soon. Maybe. Probably week two, honestly. And the Ravens will blow up the Raiders. Four and a half, I feel, is a freaking gimme. Mostly because uh, Monday Night Ravens score a fucking lot. And uh, week one Ravens blow out a lot. I would honestly bet the house to move that lineup to minus 10. I would. Because of all teams too, Vegas, Vegas doesn't get anything from me. I think the Ravens blow them out. I don't know what the total is, but real. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I might take the under still. I'm like, I don't know what the total is. Because realistically, this could be easily a 35 to 13 game. At the same time, it could be like 40 to 9. I could believe either or. But there you have it. Those are your picks. And before I begin, again, I want to point this out because I feel like this will be brought up in a later date. So I'm just going to say it as is now. In regards to the team playing in our nation's capital, that is Washington, D.C. I do not recognize the name they go by. I refuse to acknowledge it, I refuse to recognize it, and I will tell you why. There have been pretty much chance rides or whatever for years for them to change the previous name that they had. Which they should have, and they did. So, good for them. But they did not budge then. They only budged during when social injustice and everything that's been going on lately has gotten significantly more popular than it was in the past. And so they finally changed. So it's, to me, it's like, okay, now that was a straw, whatever. But to call yourselves the Washington football team, to me, that gives off the signal of you didn't actually want to change the name. You changed the name because the internet and society and social justice and all these things told you to do it. That's the only reason you did it, because you wanted to make your name look good in a time where we, people need support. If you would have given an actual name, I would have given you more believability. But no, this is publicity, and this is, hey, we totally care too. Woo! No, sorry. You don't get that from me. Until you get an actual name, I'm not buying into the your social justice believability. I'm not. That's just me. That is me. But due to this, I, realistically, I would have gone, kept referring to them by their old name. I'm still going to use their old logo for my thumbnails when they get featured for a highlighted game. But for the sake of those around me, those who I'm close to, those whose opinions I respect, I will refrain from using the, the old name. But no, I have no intention of using the current name. Until they get a new name, I'm just going to call them DC. That is just, that is me. I'm not asking you to like it. I'm not asking you to agree or disagree. That is me. That is what I'm going with. And I believe that is all for me today. Thank you all for tuning in to this lovely predictions video. We are back for the new season. 
Hope you like the new place. I cannot guarantee this will be my constant background. I'm also relaxing on a 6 dollar beanbag chair. And, um, that is about much I can say. Four leagues, four, three pick and pools, a survival pool, and a whole lot of chaos. One on each app, by the way, for those four leagues. LOA, the course is on the NFL Fantasy app, Discord, we are on ESPN, Prague, we're on Yahoo, and then, yes, Chris now opened the little league on Sleeper, even though it sounds like next year he's going to move the Prague League to Sleeper as well. We shall see. I'll also post my rosters on Twitter for those who want to take a look. I've done a lot of trades lately, too, so I clearly I don't have who I drafted. But that is all for me today. Thank you all for tuning in. I am the CRP of the TPCC. I say meow. I roll intros. I probably need a new intro now because it's been over a year. Uh, make sure you follow me on Twitter, CanadianCatCP, on Instagram, BlankCanadianCat. Follow my Twitch, me, BlankCanadianCat. And hop into the Discord leagues. Come chat with me. Come join our lady of Perpetual Bending, OLOPB. They made me a mod now. Can you believe it? They grow up so fast, my friends. They grow up so fast. This is your boy recording on a camera that's standing on a box that held I... I, I wow. Standing on a box that held headphones and then a cereal box below that. I... You can say that I'm drunk, but these five percenters haven't done jack shit for me. Thank you all for tuning in. I will catch you in week two. Peace, love, and trust. No, Lauren, this is not the shocker. Good night.